Thank you very much. I would like to move to the item. The Deputy Chairman, Senate Committee on Navy, Senator Kau Sulaiman. Please a round of applause. Also to the item. Okay. One coming to the high table, the distinguished lecturer of today and the vice chairman of the Senate Committee on Navy is the president of the Nigeria Society of Engineers, Engineer Tassi Sahad Gidan Guldi, fellow Nigeria Society of Engineers, and been represented by Engineer Ademola Aguru, fellow Nigeria Society of Engineers, vice president of the Nigeria Society of Engineers. Please a round of applause. I'd also like to move to the high table, the chairman. As committee on works, Senator Engineer Patrick Indubuzi, member of the General Center of Engineers, member of the General Institution of Civil Engineers, fellow Nigeria Institution of Mechanical Engineers, a special guest of honor of today's occasion. Please a round of applause to Senator Engineer Patrick Indubuzi. Please carry on shy into the right table. Please a round of applause. Oh, is it okay? Our special guest of honor, Senator Engineer Patrick Indukuze, member of the General Center of Engineers, fellow of the General Center of Mechanical Engineers, FICA, my special guest of honor, Imunot Senatorial District. Please a round of applause for him. Thanks for coming, so we appreciate you. The Chairman, Mechanical Engineering Distinguished Lecture, Planning Committee, former National Chairman of the Nigeria Institute of Mechanical Engineers, Engineer Ayo Fadimu, fellow Nigeria Center of Engineers, fellow Nigeria Institute of Mechanical Engineers, fellow Chartered Arbitration. Please, a round of applause for him. Please let's be on our feet to take the national anthem. Every represented by my very own brother, the national vice president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, Engineer Ademola Aguru, FNSC, FNI A.
the Chairman, Senate Committee on Navy, His Excellency, Otumba Engineer Gwinga Daniel, FNSC, FAENG, FNI Meki. The special guest of honor for today's event is Excellency Senator Patrick Undubuese, F Nice, FNSC on his way. The Chairman, House Committee on Works, you're welcome, the special guest of honor for today's event. Thank you very much for honoring our invitation. His Excellency, the Senator, Deputy Chairman on Navy, Senator Kawu Suleiman. His Excellency, Senator Sahabi Yau, Senator Binos Yaru, Senator David Jim Kuta, Senator Khalil Ibrahim Mustafa, His Excellency, Senator Yaru Anthony Siyaku. Distinguished guest lecturer here present this morning. Jinatesu Darin Diru, President of Nigeria Society of Engineers. Permit me in a special way to recognize the United States Akin Bagbo, who is the chairman of the Nigeria Society. You will agree with me that um, he saying what a man can do, a woman can probably even do it better. Is the way we have to describe the performance over the years of Engineer Mrs. Akibago by respect. My brother, the chairman of the Senior Committee on Works, who is our special guest of honor today, Engineer Patrick Ndubuizi, I recognize you and I want to thank you most sincerely. I'm aware that uh, getting you here was not particularly easy before making time to raise our occasion. I really appreciate you. <laughs> My Vice Chairman, Committee, Senior Committee on Navy, Senator Kawu Suleiman, I recognize you with respect as you permit me to single handedly call. My colleagues, one by one, who have left uh, Abuja to come and support us in this lecture. Most distinguished lecturer, Sahabi Yao, you are most welcome. <laughs> most distinguished of Minos Yare, you are most welcome. <laughs> You'll be shocked that uh, we have a senator in the Federal Republic who is still a bachelor. <laughs> Senator David <Jim> Kuta. <laughs> yeah, most welcome. And of course, you can imagine he will probably be the most sought after bachelor in Abuja today. I don't know how he is coping. Senator Kuta, you are most welcome. My brother, Senator Khalid Ibrahim Mustafa, you are most welcome. Senator Yaru Atuni Siyako, you are most welcome. And of course, uh, I start here looking at a number of people who are my seniors in this uh, profession. Uh, I cannot be recognize uh, Engineer Bayo Adiola. You are most welcome. <laughs> of course, uh, hiding away somewhere is one of my seniors also at the University of Lagos. Uh, uh, He's, uh, he's hiding his face, and I'm looking at him. <laughs> you need to forgive my protocol, because everybody who is there is uh, a big man. I don't even know where to start. But of course, um, we cannot but keep celebrating somebody who started the first transport manufacturing company in Nigeria. Uh, Aaron, Dr. Kola, will you first 
school this afternoon, uh, standing in for um, the Odole of Uduaji, Kasitsi Nadi Kutuli. Let, let me say that uh, while I was governor, I, part of what I decided was to patronize only Nigeria Bid. And I remember that um, we, we bought hundreds of transformers from Kotko, or by uh, Rekola Ifeso. And let me also say that most of those customers are still working perfectly today. We have somebody who is going to host us later today, who is a great engineer and who is the man in charge of the Naval Dockyard. Zriyakunarabalaji Uriteru, I recognize you. I just want to plead is to permit me to just say let's rest on other existing protocols. Does it mean that uh, I had the, an agreement with Nakiba that we will not keep people here for more than two hours? Uh, and he promised that we we'll start at 11, and I think we started probably at 11, and he promised he will leave us at uh, 1 o'clock. Let me also say that I definitely made the lecture very short because between you and I there isn't anything that I want to see that is new. What is missing in Nigeria is the will to act. There's virtually nothing that uh, is new anybody is going to see. And we're just hoping and praying that we God give us the will uh, to act and to do right at the leadership level. Now the topic is engineering panacea to addressing developmental deficit and unemployment in Nigeria. Um, engineering is a generic word, the way I'm looking at it today. Because if you want to talk strictly about engineering and engineers within the framework of the educational system that we have, we will have narrowed ourselves. But I just want to say that when we talk about engineering today, we are talking about engineers, we are talking about technicians. We are talking about technologies, we are talking about artisans. And I plead that we use that general work engineering to describe all of them. The reason is not far fetched. Um, we all know that there's hardly nothing an engineer can do without support of the technologists and the technicians, and of course the artisans. Um, and of course, we know that something fundamentally has gone wrong, in my own opinion, in the training of engineers in our country today, and there is a need to do some kind of reversal. Um, what am I talking about? I, I remember back in the university days, oh, by the way, I attended the, the best university in Nigeria as far as engineers are concerned. <laughs> <laughs> to them so that they can remember where we are coming from. Yeah, you, that. you know, you know, this is the almighty June, and we all have been there. just about five universities in Nigeria at that time. It's uh, in order of importance, University of Lagos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, the oldest is University of Ubado. <laughs> uh, okay, University of Ife, uh, ABU, Suka, and later Billy joined. <laughs> and um, in those days, if you wanted to study engineering, you were looking at mechanical, electrical, uh, civil, uh, okay, and that's about it. And then these people from the University of Fibato didn't know how to start engineering. Now they now started with good technology. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what they, what they think, and quite especially, you know, and they will now be telling us that they are the best. <laughs> so, um, back then at the University of Lagos, you know that it's usually three-year course, later it became four years, but then 
the, the normal thing is that um, it's mechanical, electrical, civil, architectural, the parameter design was also good, but we didn't really record with them, you know. And then um, usually about a hundred students are admitted into the first year, 25, 25, 25, in which of those departments. And you know, our teachers will tell us that look, we are, we are not in the business of producing many engineers. No, 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 no. I remember Professor Adekola was taking our strength of material or come to class and said, look, you people are making noise. You think that you are the best. We want in this class, we have the best from PBHS in Africa, the best from KC, the best from CKC. And so all these hundred people that I'm talking to here today, we don't want to produce more than 25% or 50% maximum. So half of you will fail. <laughs> and of course, everybody will keep quiet and nobody wants to be part of the people who will, who will fail. That is fair. But later on, so many other institutions started introducing engineering. And before you knew what was going on, we were now producing more engineers than technicians and more technicians and artisans. And a number of people do not understand that this is the crisis we have today in the industry because there are no artisans available to do the work. So people have qualified as engineers, but they are not supporting the people in that industry. So part of, I think, what we need to aggressively look at, and of course, those of you who are in the building industry appreciate, and it's a big shape that you can't find business, you can't have good capital, you can't have you know good electricians in Nigeria. You have to go to Bene and Togo to find. Even people can pay well, you know, it's really uh, such a challenge. So I just think that part of what uh, my colleagues are here, some of them are in the Committee of Education, is to see how we can reverse this trend. But going back to um, um, the topic, Engineering as a panacea for addressing developmental deficits and unemployment in Nigeria. You will agree with me that the biggest problem we have today in our country is unemployment. But I have always wondered why this should be so. Because without standing in Buddhist, I, I remember when I was governor in the state and we, we tried all our hands how we can improve employment, white collar jobs and all of that. After finishing that, we now say, look, we have more than enough people now in the civil service, in the public service, teaching service, but we have infrastructure deficit. And the way we are going, we would not make progress if we think that it's only foreign companies that can do our work. It's not going to happen. And as a matter of fact, Part of what I then said to myself when I was in the is that a country deserves the engineering it gets. And there is no way this model that we are running, believing that we have to award contracts in billions to foreign companies, with this rate, for the next 2,000 years, we will not have turned all the roads in Nigeria. So it means that generations of both will still have to come. You know, and then we go to other places in Europe, it's nearly important to see a road that's not hard. The solution is very, very simple. They say the road were built by the Romans. Nigerians have to build Nigeria. It's as simple as that. And it starts here. Except where I cannot find a Nigeria who can do the job, it's not possible for me to give any job to find. We do respect. And I said, if the, if the Nigerian gets the job and wants to go and hire a foreign supervisor, that's his business, they are giving the job to the Nigerian. And in eight years, I'm very, very proud, no job went outside the shores of Nigeria in eight years. <laughs> the reason why I'm saying this is that when you look at the challenge of unemployment we have in our country, that is the main. I worked in a German farm, I know the process. Um, so, you, you give us a job, that's fine. The first instruction I will get from, from, my, from my head office in Hamburg is that, uh, uh, you know, Daniel? Yes, sir. Go to First Bank. My friend, Obira Sabia, is there. That money that you were paid, you got to pay to First Bank, Obira Sabia, it will be remitted to Hamburg. And so the money is 
in our block. They will be struggling to do the job here. They will be struggling to, ah, you can look at go and take a loan, local loan to do the job. But you see, the money, the capital is already represented to Chambi. And the model that we're having today is not too uh, different. So we will not be able to make progress if we do not domesticate a man of opinion close to 95% of our concession. Let's domesticate it here. Ah, oh, the, the job that our people are doing is inferior. Yes, let it be inferior. We will learn from our mistakes. I remember when we wanted to do the, the airport. And again, it's my theory that uh, everything that has to do with what you do must be domesticated. So I then was, okay, who is the best architect? Uh, starting from Oku State, who can do uh, an international airport? So, so I found Pepe Manje, I said that they started the design. Okay. And they did a wonderful job. But along the line, people say, ah, you know, the airport is an international matter. You know, the, the people who will invest, they want to see certain international names on the design. If they don't see, they don't have confidence in it. So you need to go and find an international architect. <sighs> Okay, I said, okay, we can. They will reverse the road. I said, we'll call, we call it more family, I said, well, this is the challenge we have. And so, he then contacted the Alandasar, and we brought them in. The family was still the lead of that project, and that is what they are now designing. <laughs> so, there are ways and ways in which we can, and I know that because of that, that farm continues to grow. Many great access came out of it, and so on and so forth. And in the same way, uh, all the people that we had to use, well, look at the original master plan that we we, we had. Um, people don't know. People ask me, what is the best thing you you, you think we should remember for in State? I said, I don't have to think twice. It's a regional master plan that was created with my tenor. but I'm not a master planner. The person who headed that team is Engineer Bayo Adeola. Wow. And all the other, uh, we, we didn't have any single, uh, we didn't need any, you know, expatriate engineer to do that job. And I can tell you, till today, it is still the reference point of development. Uh, uh, so we have capacity. We have unlimited capacity that you can hardly imagine. And I just think that, uh, yeah, I'm saying this because my colleagues are here, and they see the multi-billion dollar you know, uh, investment in various ways. And I know that because they are members of the senior committee in various uh, locations, uh, what many people don't know uh, is that I also didn't do this because as governor, you know, because we facilitate the position of senators, we, we, we tend to under, uh, read the strength of the senator. Oh, very, very powerful position because we do oversight functions. And uh, in those days, I used to wonder why you don't want to call senators before coming, calling ministers. Oh, no, they are right because the ministers are oversighted by the senators. And I'm saying this to them because they belong to various committees, the special guest of honors, the senior committee chairman works. And it's an engineer, which means that there is nothing that is going on in this country about the Ministry of Works that is not under his oversight function. If he says no, that's no. And I think we tend to underestimate the capacity that we have. It's important that all of us, in whatever we do, adopt this credo that the only way for our country to grow is for us to patronize ourselves. And this is virtually in everything that we can do, talking about uh, infrastructure. So sure, if we need many more universities, I want the degrees. I think we need technical institutions that can begin to aggressively train our people. Because come to think of it, you know how it is. The civilized world has gone far ahead of us. We've done a lot of design, inventions. Um, my, late, uh, my late teacher, Professor Ojobi, died a frustrated man. And many of you don't know the reason why. Because he, he lived ahead of his time. Okay, so he produced the Otunov. 
and we're going to look at it, you know, where he left it. What's the notion of is a vehicle that has the capacity, you know, which he intended for war situations to go, uh, you know, forward and backward without having to, to, to turn. The idea is that, of course, people in the Navy are here. If you are approaching a war environment and you have to build a retreat, sometimes you don't have enough opportunity to make a new turn. So you just have to reverse. And reverse gear can hardly do more than about oh, a kilometer before you have crisis. But with the auto of the speed that you use forward is the one that you use backward. So he did it, it was there. Nobody to develop it. And then, of course, you know the story of the of the poker. I don't know whether our mechanical people understand how that is. It was, the poker was developed by Professor Ojobi back at the University of Lagos. That's what I keep telling this uh, band of people. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was very, very simple. You know, it was a mechanical engineer, but you know, when people, I think he told all the story of the, the professor of uh, mechanical vibrations and automatic control. And what he then provided at that time was that there's something called resonance. Yes. And if a particular frequency coincides with another frequency, it can cause an explosion. That's the whole lesson of resonance. Okay? So he was telling us a lot of that. And then he told us about some soldiers marching on a bridge during the war, Second World War. And then the bridge was vibrating. And the sound of that vibration at a stage coincided with the sound of the marching. You know, wah, 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 wah. And the bridge, uh, the, the bridge gave up because there was restaurants. That's what he told us. And that said, the only thing that can prevent that is that concrete must be well vibrated. And so he then introduced, because it was a press of mechanical operations, introduced the, 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 the poker. And that concept was there undeveloped until you know our brothers from abroad came, discovered it, and went and commercialized it. And after commercialized it, we were not, they were not going to pay peanuts as it's a, a reality. And you know, as the support, how he became a lawyer because he said the solution is not engineering; he's going to change the dashing. <laughs> and he now had to be going to court himself to do and the things must be done. So the point I'm trying to make, simply, uh, is that we have capacity. We have capacity, and I'm one person who believes. Uh, we're discussing something at the at the Senate, and one of my colleagues, ah, we have to go and miss all. No, 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 no. I can't talk here. Because if I talk here, we said it will be looking as selfish. We were talking about the lifts at the National Assembly. I said, well, I would have to go and bring SY to go and mention it. I said, for God's sake, I, Egina, Benga, Daniel, install all these lifts and commission them in 2007. But I didn't get the contract. One cowboy got the contract <laughs> and then gave it to me. Because, you know, I was running a professor, I couldn't go through the ring barrel of, you know, what to go through when you want to get uh, such a job. So, so they, they gave it to somebody and they gave it to I did the job. Okay. Now the job is there. I said, okay, now that the job is there, let us maintain this thing. Let the thing work. And I'm going to call this a call who I am the one. <laughs> You know, public sector rule. Uh, why I didn't push it, I'll tell you. Because if I push it, I say, ah, he used his position exactly. as a senator to get the maintenance. So I said, just be doing whatever you are doing. But if you have problems on the ground. So what I'm saying is that we have capacity. In all areas, there is capacity, and we must come. Everything I'm saying here, you find out that I'm going back to the same thing. Everything I'm going to talk about, I'm going to go back to the same thing. Because I think that we underestimated Fela. We underestimated the intelligence of that man. And we continue to see it on a daily basis that, except we patronize ourselves, we're just wasting time. Now, briefly on uh, entrepreneurship and innovation. And you know what has happened? All the people who studied other things, having found out that there is no road without engineering. You now say, I, 
I'm a medical engineer, <laughs> a social engineer. Engineering is closely linked with technological advancement. Embracing emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, renewable energy, smart infrastructure, can revolutionize Nigeria's infrastructure landscape. These technologies can improve efficiency, reduce costs, enhance sustainability, and create new employment opportunities in emerging sectors. By encouraging the adoption of integration of these technologies, Nigeria can position itself as a leader in technological innovation and create a conducive environment for economic development. Government should take the lead by creating the enabling environment while announcing robust private partnerships. Now, everybody is now talking of artificial intelligence. And I'll go back to what happened after the Second World War. It was then the Industrial Revolution. Okay, so we must industrialize, we must produce things here. Um, at some point in time, we can say that Nigeria also tried. Uh, because once upon a time, Nigerian vehicles were made here, even though made by foreign partnerships. Pujo uh, Tobobai had a plant in Kaduno, Busso got in Badaluri. There was a tire, there was a tire, I think, in Ibado, in Bauchi, in land in Ibado. Uh, an uncle was doing Mercedes in the in, in, in Nugu. And before you know it, all of this is what being manufactured here as a first step, even though they call them CKD. But as a result of those manufacturing, other local industries started. For instance, there was a chemical stack in Djibouti, making brake parts and oil filters. Dunlop was making tires, you know, which I didn't have in factory here, they were making uh, tires. Exile batteries was uh, going on. So slowly, gradually, what would have happened if that had been consistent? And by now, probably 90% of all those components that we used to make vehicles would have been finished here. Of course, you know the story of uh, uh, Ajakuta State Complex, which is, you know, at that time, you know, there was Alaja Steel. We already had all the just steel only beers, the Shopo steel only beers. We had Niger machine tools in the Shopo. All these places, all these things are supposed to be, you know, what we should be doing so that we can be relevant with the industrial revolution. Okay. Now, because of economic scale, and because we have not got our infrastructure right, what we are now hearing is that, okay, you know, the capitalist is, is an open market system. So don't close your uh, doors. Anybody can bring anything from anywhere. Okay, so what has that done to our manufacturing? So you now want me to go and manufacture lifts in Nigeria when the Nigerian market cannot take maybe more than 1,000 lifts in a year against a company in Europe for example, that wants to that's making 1 million lifts. How can I uh, compete? So those were the challenges that we faced. But again, we seem to have lost out in that industrial revolution. I'm really worried whether we can reverse it. Because thereafter, it became the ICT revolution. Now that we seem to have lost that industrial revolution, don't let us miss this ICT revolution. And then you heard when we were talking about it. We, we, we did four ICT polytechnics. <coughs> I we said these politics will do it fine. We call them monotechnics. We said there is only one thing we want to create in Silicon Valley here for ICT. And so we did those but four of them. One in Sharpati, one in Jabubu, one in uh, uh, Ota, in Besa, and the other one in uh, Iwekoro, in uh, Itori. Four ICT, monotechnics. But you know what happened? When we now went to look at the Ted Fund support system, Ted Fund says they don't support monotechnics. They only support polytechnics. So because of that, so that those schools don't miss out from temple support, they now started business administration, <laughs> economy, social this, social that. But I still insisted until I learned that, please, 
even if you are bringing all of those ones in, make sure that ninety percent of what you do here is ICT related. And based on that, between you and I, I feel very excited because we have so many people who are ICT certified uh, and they got job internationally and they are doing very very well. Now it has moved forward again. While that one was going on, of course, India took over from us. But the law and all the things that India did with ICT, they took over from us. And people keep forgetting that India ourselves got independence about the same time from the British. And look at where India, India is today. Today, an Indian is the Prime Minister of Britain. And people keep talking about great countries and they said, okay, well, how do you measure greatness? Look at all the big tech countries in the world today. 90% of them are not by Indians. So they found a way. Now, the next one is now what they call artificial intelligence. That's the new brand where we are going. So I'm hoping that having missed out the industrial revolution, having partially lost out in that industrial this one that is coming, but the special guest of all, be Nigeria never lose uh, out. Collaboration and partnerships. Addressing development deficits and unemployment requires collaboration and partnerships between the government, the private sector, the academia, and international organizations. Public private partnership can mobilize resources, share expertise, and accelerate growth. Local manufacturing industry must always be supported by government, which will act as a catalyst for work creations. The Nigerian Seminar should come up with some more seminars like this and avenues to provide policy direction to government. In conclusion, let me once again thank all of you for the patience and understanding. Uh, when we came in this morning, I asked the, the, our chairman, I said, look, I don't like talking to an empty hall. How many people are coming? He says, look, don't worry, let me assure you, um, the place will be filled. <laughs> and when I look at uh, the people who have come uh, uh, today, uh, they're not just anybody. We have the creme de la creme of the young profession at the Our president, thank you very much. I appreciate you. <laughs> Ordinarily, people don't have time for these sort of things, and attention span is very, very uh, uh, limited. But I've also seen that while this thing lasted, everybody was uh, right attention. Let me thank uh, Dina Eferi, um, who is the ED for uh, the Nigeria Power uh, Industry. Um, for people who don't know, he also attended the University of Lagos. <laughs> But not only that, I think when I was the president of the University of Lagos Engineering Society, he was my secretary. He was my secretary. And he was a good, wonderful uh, secretary. Thank you very much, Um It's very, very unusual to find uh, people with uh, you know, a crown like this. Thank you very much uh, uh, for coming. Um, one of the greatest engineers that we don't appreciate we have, um, who happens to be the chairman of the governing council of our Premier University of Lagos? It is here, uh, Professor Tori Ashiru. Thank you very much. And I'm somebody that was very scared of when I was trying to rock politics because he spoke a lot of grammar. And I watched him on TV. I said, How can I go and face this, uh, this man? And at a stage, he became the, uh, the, bo the boss of my post. And uh, um, my brother from Odi, memories, memories, If you have somebody who is knowledgeable about what he what he does, that's 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 actually very good. Please, I really appreciate uh, your time. Those ideas of yours must not die with you. You must uh, bring them up. But let me confess to you: in those days of words, I used to be scared of you. <laughs> yes, I debated a bit when I was in school, but this one, the way he brought grandma, there is a lot of people. You are most, most uh, uh, welcome. Um, and I'm uh, We have a, an uh, agreement. I'm going to say it publicly. 
the Lagos Shagamu is fine now. 30 minutes were there. But Shagamu to Jebode to Raja 4 is not okay. But after that, to Bidi is fine. So, uh, you know, that recent thing is a problem. <laughs> so I just want to uh, you know, put you on the spot. Guys. And I trust you, you will, it's just about uh, 80 kilometers. I think it's something that uh, if you just help me squeeze the bit side bit. Thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate you. And of course, um, uh, Are. You will not go scroll free with this support, and uh, of course, the chairman, my president, will whisper to you. When we see you and what you have said, he's good now. So. <laughs> and uh, let me also thank uh, Presidency Ochumba Engineer Benga Daniel, Senator Representative Ogo East Central District, Distinguished Guest of Honor, Senator Engineer Patrick Shiwabwa Ndubweze. Senator representing Imo North Central District, all the distinguished senators here present, the chairman of Nigeria Institute of Mechanical Engineering, and the Mrs. Olu Jumilade Akimbago, FNSC, fellow of our Green Society, NEC, fellow of the uh, Institute of Mechanical Engineering. Protocol or protocol, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure and delight to be addressing you today at this auspicious event. The 2023 Mechanical Engineering District Lecture by the Dynamic Nigeria Institution of Mechanical Engineering, MMK. We must continue to unlearn, learn, and increase our knowledge as engineers. And this forum is one of such. The team for the lecture is engineering, financial for development, and massive employment generation in Nigeria. Engineering is all about problem solving. That is why an engineer is come to be a problem solver and developer of technological innovation. When you identify a problem and find the solution, that is the business. And when the business is created, it employs several people and it is expand. Therefore, creating more opportunity, we must improve our industry by encouraging the industrialization of our economy. We must bridge the gap between the industry and the academia. Uh, Mr. Chairman of the Nigerian Mechanical Engineers, my distinguished brother, the guest lecturer, Otumba Benga Daniel, a former governor, now a distinguished senator. Uh, my distinguished colleagues, the engineers that uh, are here who have uh, filled the hall and capacity, uh, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would say today my prayers have been answered about uh, Benga Daniel. We met in the Senate. And to be honest with you, his calmness has been an issue of investigation. <laughs> Up to today, I couldn't determine what type of person he is. But to God so kind, I now know a lot about this gentleman. He is an achiever, to be honest with you. Somebody who achieved greatness through hard work. From what he has just mentioned and said, I realize that uh, he is somebody who worked so hard to become a self-made man. Distinguished, how I wish every Nigerian would think the way you do. If only we do this country will have been better for it. The paper you have just presented, 
distinguished senator. It's all about we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. We must do it. What else do we need in Nigeria? Rather than to believe we can do it, we must do it. And it is this era that we must, we must prostrate to do what we believe we must do for this country to get to where we want it to be. Distinguished, you are a man of honor, and uh, we have recognized that one. What made me, you know, to be the most happy person of this evening is that I have just realized that we are of the same year, born in the same year with Odumba Daniel. <laughs> but look at him well. I don't know whether it is uh, the early money shape you always have. <laughs> that uh, he hasn't got the grey beers I have. <laughs> if it is, then I will equally start shaving because it will be a little bit. <laughs> For this meeting, please to say, I will want to thank him for bringing me here, for sharing the ideas that I have never shared with him before, and for making me to meet people of great honor in this uh, very hall. Thank you very much for what I have enjoyed and for the honor done to me. I think I should go beyond what my brother has just uh, announced. That is a denotation from the uh, Committee of Navy. Uh, in addition, I want to make a personal donation of one million naira. Thank you very much. Senator Anthony Siakaro, representing Gombe South. When you see a Gombe man in Lagos, it's only Otumba that can pull him down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my chairman on the Committee of Navy. Chairman works also. Engineer Patrick, we cherish your presence. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Kabiesi, a carbon. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, actually, we live in a world, in a, we say a, a, a single, you know, a connected world. And when we say connected wall, it means everything is connected. So yes, engineering does that. But you know, without the money, nothing engineering can do. I'm an accountant and a banker fully by profession. <laughs> so, so engineering, yes. And uh, we recognize that engineering, if you can do without money, okay. You know? But I think all of us are very, very important. Uh, as we say, health is well, so many can not always say their own. Everybody will say his own. Uh, and all that. So everybody is important. We thank Chief Otumba for bringing us here and we support this cause. In fact, we just went outside to have one chat with the colleague. Then I was confessing to the colleague that this is worth it. This is it. This is worth it, you know. And uh, if we can do things like this, you know, to our various professions, then we build Nigeria together. Just like the concept is said, uh, honestly, if you sit down and say you will develop Nigeria on imported issues till you die, you will leave Nigeria like this. The only way is to look inwards and have that mind to commit it and do it. So the world is doing it. Just like Otumba said, policies are there, everything is the, you know, the will to execute. And I think that's an area all of us here should just study well and make up our mind that we can do it and we can do it. You have to start somewhere. Because it's just like somebody holding a of this occasion, our guest lecturer, distinguished, very senior persons, persons on the high table, my dear brothers, engineers, 
Um, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy to be here. I just landed to join my colleagues for today's oversight function, and I was told that I should pick a taxi to this place. And I came unhappily meeting with people of great honor. Um, guest lecturer, sir, uh, I'm quite glad to know more and more about you. He is one of the most arranged senators in the Senate. If he decides to come out corporate, he will be different. If he decides for traditional wear, he will be different. And I asked him, I don't know how he used to be when he was young. Your lecture today is educative, very challenging, and very direct. This, this today's topic, I'm the Chairman of the Senate Committee on Employment, Labor and Productivity. And I'm sure your meeting here is to improve productivity. The training of the engineers is for them to be more productive. Then you are talking about employment. That's also about my own primary committee. I'm the vice chairman of the committee on fair character. So that one and they all inclusiveness. <laughs> um, sir, I came today too. I look at the bureau or the program booklet, and I saw engineer Tassio. We are all at ATBU together. The president of yeah, we are all at ATBU. He was one year my senior. Then I met engineer Adem Ademola Bello. He was. I was senior, he was senior to Tassio, then Tassio was my senior, I was one year behind them. <laughs> then the accountant for Badama was talking about Bugu, Lewis Bugu. Lewis and him, they were two years ahead of me. I think Lewis Bugu, they were the two first class students in mechanical engineering. And in, in, uh, in uh, Adamala Bello, Miss First Class with point zero something. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. Uh, today, I want to confess that I'm an engineer. Oh, yeah. uh, I, I want to confess that I have to register, sir. <laughs> um, I'm glad. It gladdens my heart. And then the accountants are saying that as an accountant, I will not announce. But you are no more accountants. We are members that ask for public votes. And we speak and ask for the votes. And therefore, our donations should not be covered. Because we, we ask in public, and we have to give in public. Yes. And on that note, I have an additional one million naira. 